Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about alarm management in DX NetOps. So DX NetOps uh, is comprised of several components, uh, one of them being a, a fault management and event correlation system, the other being a performance management system. And combined into the DX NetOps portal, you're able to see a combination of both those faults and performance data. We're going to start off looking at the fault component. We're currently looking at DX Spectrum here and the alarm view. So what are alarms? Alarms are severities of events that occur in the system. So an example of an event might be that we're unable to contact a device or that a configuration change has been made on a device or that our fiber channel switch uh, is having a problem with one of its fans. And all of these events um, come into the system and are assigned a severity like critical, major, or minor. And that's what we're looking at here. So you'll see inside DX spectrum here, I'm at the very top level of the hierarchy, my spectrum. And it's telling me, it's giving me a count of each of those severities of alarms. So I have six critical, seven major, and five minor alarms. And then over here in the informational pane, I'm able to see what those alarms are. One of the nice things about DX Spectrum is that you have the capability to modify views um, as appropriate for your user. So for example, what I've done and what I suggest a, a lot of people do is to sort these alarms based on severity. So critical first, then major minor. And then secondarily on this tab called impact. So impact, as we'll see in a second here, is how many things are affected by this alarm. So if I have several critical alarms, like I do in this case, if I rank them secondarily by impact, I know that working this particular alarm will uh, cause five things to be fixed as opposed to this one down here, which only has an impact of one or one device that's, that's currently affected. So let's take a look here at um, this impact and what that means really. I'm gonna look inside our Boston site here and at this topology. So one of the things that DX Spectrum does very well is to map out the topology of a network. And this is extremely important when we're doing things like uh, root cause analysis and fault isolation. So root cause analysis is just what it sounds like. It's trying to find what the root cause of a problem inside the network is. Fault isolation is what happens when we try and give the operator a single alarm for something that's happening in the network. So in this example, I can see that I have a router here that we can contact, a firewall that we cannot contact. You can see the red alarm on that icon. And then I have another router switch and a couple of workstations down here that are gray. These are gray because they have been what is referred to as fault isolated. That means that we are not going to raise an alarm on them in the alarm console, okay? Because we believe that the root cause is that this firewall is down. When this firewall goes down, Spectrum will go through a set of algorithms to try and contact these other devices or to see if there are other paths in the network to get to them to determine um, if they should be isolated or not. If we look at this particular device here and then at the alarm tab, so now I'm in context of this device, so this alarm tab is only showing this device, I can see uh, what's going on and the impact of five. So that is the firewall plus the four devices behind it give it an impact of five. Now, sometimes you'll have much more than five and it will be a, a little bit harder to see. If I click this icon here, the I for information, I'll get more information about that particular alarm. And one of the things that I can see is the impact. So if I click on this and then expand my management lost, this will show me all of the devices that are impacted by this alarm, which is the root cause. 
Now that we're back out at the main console for DX Spectrum, I wanted to talk about a few other things that we can do for alarms. If I right click on an alarm, I can acknowledge the alarm, meaning that it's been seen. I can assign it to a troubleshooter. So you would have to set up the troubleshooters first using the tools troubleshooters menu item and then you can assign them to troubleshooters. And when they're assigned to troubleshooters, they'll get an email saying that they've been assigned an alarm to, to uh, look at. In addition, I can mail these alarms to anybody that I'd like, a distribution list or maybe somebody who wants to uh, be al alerted to the fact that there's an alarm condition on a particular device. The other thing I wanted to talk about are filters. If I click here, you'll see that I have two different filters set. I have all alarms, which is what we're seeing currently. And I also have one called device configuration alarms. If I click that, I see that all of my alarms have been filtered down to just configuration related alarms. You can define these filters in the preferences of DX Spectrum. Okay, so this has been a quick overview of alarm management within DX Spectrum. We're next going to take a look at alarm management within the DX NetOps portal. Okay, now we're in the NetOps portal here, the HTML interface. Uh, this interface allows us to look at both fault and performance uh, within the same dashboards. So if I come into dashboards, I see that out of the box, there's an alarms category and an alarm console. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you'll see a very similar view to what we were just looking at within DX Spectrum. And that's because the alarm console will gather these alarms from DX Spectrum and present them here. And when I click on any one of these, it starts filling out the information exactly as we would see it from within DX Spectrum. Now there's a couple things that we need to set up for this alarm console. The first thing that I do is I'll come under the cog wheel here and select edit. Is that all the dashboards within DX NetOps are framed by a time. So if we're looking at the past hour, it will only show me alarms for the past hour. That's typically not what I wanna see within my alarm console. So what I've done is I've come down here under customize time range, I've enabled it, and then I've selected a time range. I've chosen 30 days, but you have the ability to choose other time periods as well. I'll go ahead and save this. And again, this is what shows up then all the alarms that are within DX Spectrum currently. The other thing you'll notice here is that um, by default, these alerts and alarms are ordered by the time that they came in. But as we talked about in DX Spectrum, typically I wanna see them by the severity and by the impact. So what I can do is a couple things here. All of these columns have the ability to be moved. So I can take my impact column and I can move it next to my severity. I can also click on the cog wheel and you'll see that there are sorted columns here. So I can decide what columns I want sorted in what order. So I'm going to choose severity first, and then I'm going to choose impact second. Now I have the same severity and impact views that I did within DX Spectrum. One of the nice things about this view is the ability to look at different aspects of the alarm. So for example, our management lost, this is exactly what we looked at under the impact tab in DX Spectrum. So this shows me the impact of these uh, devices uh, because of this alarm. The other thing is neighbor topology. If I click on this, it's going to show me a view of the topology of the affected device and one hop away from that device. So in this case, I can see the Boston router, I can see the firewall that's having the problem, and I can see the upstream router that has no problem, and I can see their status easily at a glance. Just as we could within DX Spectrum, I can do uh, several things. I can create a ticket, 
I can do some rudimentary troubleshooting, like pulling the device, pinging the device, doing a trace route to the device. I can assign a troubleshooter if I wanted to, and I could acknowledge it if I wanted to. One of the other things that we talked about was creating filters for alarms. I'm able to do that right here in this interface as well. In the filter column here, if I click on this, you'll see that I have several different filters. There's also a category manage saved filters. If I click on this, it brings up an interface where I can create a new filter. I'll click on this, and then there are several different categories that I can use. So for example, I could say the item name or IP address or what class of model is affected. Just as we did in the DX NetOps portal, I have one for my configuration alarms. So if I click on this, it's only going to show me my configuration alarms. Let's take a little another view of how we can customize what this alarm console looks like. I'm gonna go back in and edit it again. You'll see the max uh, alarms to retrieve. So this is how many alarms we want to get maximum from DX Spectrum um, into this view. Ping count is when we click on the ping button, how many times we try to ping a device. And the grid height is simply the area of, uh, that showcases where the alarms are. So how big you want that area to be. This is also a place where you can define the sort order if you didn't want to do it directly in the view. The panels that we just looked at, such as topology and interfaces and events, you can either decide to have them included or not included by default within the console. There are also different attributes that are available to show across the alarm console. You can, by default, have a filter in the view. So for example, if you had a configuration view that had the router's configuration in it, you might wanna say, I just want to see my configuration alarms. And then finally, the context setting is, um, tells me what groups, either dynamic, which means I select them in my group finder, or fixed, which means I define them inside this view, are used. It's simply another filter for this alarm view. One last thing that we'll take a look at here is, uh, this is the default alarm console. There's another area that has alarms as well. Okay, I've gone into the inventory view here. One of the things that uh, you'll notice is that the current alarm state uh, is part of the default set of things that we show within the inventory. So I can go ahead and see what those alarms are. I also wanna show you another place that alarms are um, located within the DX NetOps portal, and that's on uh, each individual device. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, search for a router down here that I know has an alarm on it. You can see here the major alarm, but um, if I'm in the context page for that particular router, you'll see that um, one of the tabs over here on the left-hand side is the alarms tab. So I can go ahead and click on that. And it's going to show me any uh, alarms that are uh, on the device. Again, within the time frame um, that I have set up for, for this particular um, device, which happens to be the last 30 days here. Another thing that we can do is create custom views. So I've created a custom tab here called router configuration. And this does a couple different things. One, it grabs the router configuration from DX Spectrum and presents it down here for our view within the NetOps portal. And the second thing that it does is it shows any configuration related alarms here, uh, where we talked about, uh, again, the fact that you can configure this view to look many different ways. So if we look at the way I've set this particular one up, I'll go ahead and edit it here. You'll see that I have not put in any of the customized panels um, because I'm not interested in any of this um, information. Because in this context, I just want things related to configuration. And what I've done is I've forced uh, this view to always go to the last 30 days of alarms, and I've forced it to look at my filter of NCM alarms here. 
and I've saved that inside of the view. And what this looks like, if I go ahead and edit uh, this, this um, tab, you'll see that alarms is one of the categories. Um, it's under alarms and events. You'll see alarms right here. I would just take this and drag it in wherever I want to in my dashboard. Then I can click on the edit icon and apply those filters and time ranges if I wanted to. So that's it for um, configuration um, inside of a device's context. Uh, again, you can add a tab here and then um, create whatever view you would care, including uh, alarms. All right, so in conclusion, uh, we've looked at where alarms come from. So that's DX spectrum and alarms are simply events that occur that have a severity associated with them. DX spectrum uses a patented technology to try and determine root cause and apply fault isolation so that we are not flooding the console with alarms. We're only sending valid actionable alarms to the console. So we took a look at, at that in DX Spectrum and then the NetOps portal, which is where most people will spend the majority of their time uh, because I can have uh, the same view into those alarms as we did in DX Spectrum, as well as access to all of my performance data.